Now, you can listen to Wine and Dine Radio while shopping at the grocery store or your neighborhood wine merchant. Wine and Dine Radio can be heard using your wireless internet on your cell phone. You're listening to iWine Radio. iWine Radio is a production of Food Tastes Better with Wine on the web at iwineradio.com. Hey guys, I thank you for listening to iWine Radio and we are still the only wine channel on iTunes Radio. If you go look under iTunes Radio icon and scroll down to News and Talk Directory and it's listed alphabetically, click on that and the stream comes up immediately. iWineRadio.com where you can find links to individual guests. And if anyone's interested in advertising or becoming an underwriter or sponsor, please contact us at iWineRadio.com. We really, really appreciate your support. The more support we get, the more conversations I can have with fascinating people around the world, including you. If you have a story to tell that you'd like to share on iWine Radio, go to iWineRadio.com and contact us and we'll go from there. Hi, I'm Joel Butler, Master of Wine and co-author of Divine Vintage, following the wine trail from Genesis to the Modern Age. Several months back, I want to say mm, six, seven months back, we had our first conversation with Joel Butler, Master of Wine on Wine and Dine, which was an absolute joy to me. And he mentioned at the tail end of that conversation that he would be releasing a book collaboration with Randall Heskett called Divine. Well, at that time, I don't think the title had been worked out entirely. But today, Joel is rejoining us on uh, really with the launch of this book. The, the publication launch date is November 13th just in time for the holidays. It's called Divine Vintage Following the Wine Trail from Genesis to the Modern Age. Joel Butler is one of the first two resident Masters of Wines in North America. He holds degrees in history from Stanford University and the University of Colorado and is currently the president of the Institute of Masters of Wine in North America. He lives in Seattle. He is the owner of Wine No LLC. He makes homemade wine. And Dr. Randall Heskett, who we are not talking to today, is a biblical scholar with advanced degrees in Old Testament Hebrew Bible from Yale University and the University of Toronto. And Joel, I have to tell you that this is an extremely scholarly book, but I wouldn't expect anything else from you than a really scholarly attack of this subject. Well, then, first, thanks for having me on the program again. It's really great to be done with this project. I would only like to say that I hope it's not too scholarly. That wasn't our intent. We really want a wide variety of people to enjoy the book and read it. But we also have to be mindful of the fact that there is a lot of uh, aspects to what we've discussed in the book that requires you know, a certain degree of uh, authenticity. Yes. So we have these things right, but at the same time, there's a lot of stories and there's a lot of uh, answers, shall we say, that are widely uh, interesting, I think, to a great number of people, even if you don't like wine, per se. Um, you'll find much of the discussion enlightening and interesting. And the whole second half of the book is really about the wines being made today in the modern biblical countries. Um, and in some cases where they haven't made great wines for 2,000 years. Okay, so couch this for us. When you say biblical countries, what countries are you referring to? When we talk about biblical countries or following the Bible wine trail, what we're really talking about are wines in the, in the lands that featured in the ancient biblical text, either Old Testament or New Testament, so clearly Israel, but Jordan and Lebanon and Syria, Turkey, Greece, uh, certainly Egypt, um, and, of course, it can go even beyond that, because any place that's mentioned in the Bible is fair game. 
but we focus particularly on the Levant, Turkey, and Greece in terms of the modern uh, countries' wines this time. I think the follow-up book, when we have a chance to do that in a year or so, will obviously oh. include southern Italy and Sicily, Cyprus, and so on. Okay. A lot of the problem for researching the book and limiting it was a question of space. The uh, publishers wouldn't allow us to make a huge tome. But secondly, um, during the time I was over in the Mideast and so forth last year doing much of the research, as everybody's aware, uh, that part of the world sometimes imploded, and places that I intended to go simply were not uh, feasible, like Syria or Egypt. Yes. So we had to change some of the direction of the book and focus it more towards uh, the wines and the issues in the modern world, anyway, with the countries that we could visit. Okay, Joel, I want to put a fire under this uh, subject matter. and You know I'm talking to you from deep in the Bible Belt here on the coast of North Carolina, so I'm going to quote from chapter 12, first page, and if you could uh, address this. And uh, Jesus loved, in quote-unquote, eating and drinking and had a reputation of being a quote-unquote glutton and a wino. This revelation adds to the astonishment for those who cannot fathom a human Jesus. If he could produce any wine from water, what would be, what would he drink given modern choices? So talk to us about this. Well, the, from the biblical point of view, obviously my colleague in the book, uh, Randall, would be a better person to address the actual language that the New Testament uses here, but, you know, it's in Matthew, and the Greek word for wino that he translates on the post, means wine drinker. But aside from the fact that obviously Jesus was a human being first, um, the fact is that if we talk about given wines that he would drink if he were still alive, um, we went through a process of tasting through a range of wines that I chose based upon their adherence to ancient methods of production, particularly with regard to either aging an amphora, uh, fermenting an amphora, but also even wines uh, that are being made that are, well, what we would call doctored. But the ancients, both in Israel and in Greece and Turkey, all these countries, the, the addition of things to wine, like honey or resin oh, yeah. or myrrh, herbs and spices. This was done all the time everywhere, and it's what the tastes of people were like. So these are wines, in, even in the, in the Talmudic period, which, during which Jesus was alive, there's references to wines that are made with an addition of honey or an addition of uh, spices yeah. for various reasons. So we kind of thought it would be interesting that the wines that he would like today would be probably wines being made in similar ways. They would be understandable to someone of his period. And so we spent uh, a whole day tasting through a range of wines like that and putting it in the context of having dinner with Jesus. Um, And it sounds somewhat flippant, but we really actually, if you think about it, um, it makes perfectly good sense. He spent time when he traveled, he stayed with friends or he stayed with people who put him up. No yeah. doubt he drank wine, of course. Uh, I mean, let's face it, he was a good Jew until he... Uh, and, but he was always a good Jew. I don't want to say he wasn't because he was Jewish. That's the context. That's the inescapable reality. Yeah. But he had a di- few different ideas. But nonetheless, wine was part of his uh, lifestyle, no doubt. Yes. And so enjoying wine uh, that would be better than others and appreciating it, I suspect, uh, we can only imagine, but at the end of the day, there's no reason why he wouldn't have been able to try a lot of different wines and have an, at least an appreciation for certain styles. So that's what we had fun doing, putting it together with the kinds of food people might eat today and enjoying and trying some of these different styles of wines, which are still being made today. Anything, Everything from Amarone, and, which is made from dried raisin grapes, mm-hmm to uh, wines like Retsina, which are flavored with resin, to uh, wines made by some people. Certainly in Georgia, there's still a long tradition, which is, well, it's not exactly a biblical country, we have to refer to it, uh, because that's still where the most ancient style of winemaking exists today. 
in a relatively unbroken history going back six to 8,000 years of making wine in buried amphora, mm. uh, buried clay jars. Yes. And so these are the kinds of things that would have been completely familiar to someone from that period. Aren't the the uh, I interviewed Becky Sue Epstein when he when she was in Georgia and and I want to say that what did she say Clevny or Clevna were the wines made from the the amphora there? Oh, uh, the wines made in amphora uh, or clay jars as they call those jars in Georgia are called Quevri. Oh, uh, that's it. That's it. Okay, yeah, now Q Q V E V R I roughly. Uh, Joel, at the at the end of the book, you have this very thorough and thoughtful uh, notation of of notes, all the references by chapter. And um, mm-hmm. so, what is you, for you and Dr. Randall Heskett? Who do you? Who is your intended audience? I would, our audience is a, a wide range of people. As I said, we try to write this not as an academic book but one has to at least be aware of the fact that people who will read this book, some of them are pe- people who have an academic factor. Yes. But by and large, it's anybody who's interested in, in wine, in the concept that wine is part of our culture and that the interpretation of how wine was spoken about in the biblical text, both Old and New Testament is not only extensive, but extremely important to the development both of the cultural and religious uh, nature of what became the Judeo-Christian heritage, the Abrahamic religions. But it also reflects metaphorically, I think, the you know evolution of human society, that wine, in effect, is a vector or a metaphor for the evolution of at least Western society, but yeah. you know, human community and culture. So we look at it as, as something to appeal to people who are interested in history, people who love wine, want to understand it more, and to people of uh, uh, religious uh, interests who have interest in seeing a different facet of, of what the texts uh, mean. And finally, to those who enjoy modern wines and are looking for new experiences, because the half, second half of the book it's all about the modern wines in the, along the Bible wine trail and the evolution of wine in countries that have really been off the radar for many years. I mean, we, we talk about wine from the old world. We talk about wine from the new world. We're, we're now talking about wine in the ancient world. That should be the third factor. Wow. wow. Oh, Joel Butler, this has been fascinating. And, and uh, you're off to Turkey tomorrow, I know, and we thank you. So I'm so glad we captured you before you left for your trip. And thank you for the divine vintage following the wine trail from Genesis to the modern age. This is really a a book I'm going to hang on to. Thank you, Lynn. We will have links up for you to learn more. You're listening to Wine and Dine. Now you can listen to Wine and Dine Radio while shopping at the grocery store or your neighborhood wine merchant. Wine and Dine Radio can be heard using your wireless internet on your cell phone. You're listening to iWine Radio. iWine Radio is a production of Food Tastes Better with Wine on the web at iWineRadio.com. Hey guys, I thank you for listening to iWine Radio and we are still the only wine channel on iTunes Radio. If you go look under iTunes Radio icon and scroll down to News and Talk Directory and it's listed alphabetically, click on that and the stream comes up immediately. iWineRadio.com where you can find links to individual guests. And if anyone's interested in advertising or becoming an underwriter or sponsor, please contact us at iWineRadio.com. We really, really appreciate your support. The more support we get, the more conversations I can have with fascinating people around the world, including you. If you have a story to tell that you'd like to share on iWine Radio, go to iWineRadio.com and contact us and we'll go from there.